Welcome, I'm Kobe, presenting for Fractal Intelligence. And some things work and some things don't work. And many of these things, uh, it's counterintuitive. So for that aspect, it's a problem because uh, you cannot guide yourself through a training process by um, by trusting your brain, so to say, you really need to try and error. And I'm doing this for like a good 30 years now, so I, I had a few trial and errors, like we all did. Um, so I made a quick presentation uh, to to follow up. I call it what works because that's literally the only thing that matters in my opinion. And I summarized uh, what worked for me. So this is a very hands-on practical approach. Uh, next slide, please. What works is principles. Um, I'm actually a fanatic about principles now. Uh, after this process, uh, because it works with everything, any kind of problem solving uh, works on a principles basis. Why? Here's two definitions of principles. A principle is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system or a belief, behavior or chain reasoning. And that pretty much covers it. It's a truth. So you don't have to trust another trader. You don't have to trust a book you read, a course you read. It's a truth itself. For that, it's a high energy, meaning truth after love. That's the two driving forces of high energies on the planet. You can lead against this, and you need a lot of leading because in trading, it's not that you start uh, with a burger stand, uh, get successful, use that money, open a restaurant, and work yourself up till you have a few Michelin stars. Um, you're working forever with failure, uh, and statistically, most traders basically give up shortly before they actually would have their breakthrough because they're either out of money um, or uh, they're out of trust to themselves. They just break. And that's why principles are the, your best companions, um, because you bring the truth, a high energy to, let's say, for example, a belief that's also a very strong energy, but still on a lower scale, um, to correct behavior. Um, the second uh, definition that I use to um, a general scientific theory or law that has numerous special applications across a wide field. Wide field for being the focus, you need something that you can throw at everything because you're dealing with uh, math, you're dealing with psychology, you're dealing uh, with fundamentals, technicals, uh, spirituals, whatever. It, it, trading encompasses so many variables so that that's the reasons why most quants fail because due to a high probability of variables, you uh, you simply don't have the chance to, to just put this all in a box. Uh, no offense against quants, quite the contrary. I, I use a lot of quantitative methods, but I'm talking about extremes. So I'm, I'm an absolute fan of principles. And the great thing is you learn about yourself. These, uh, uh, as it says, here, application across a wide field, you can use principles that you apply to trading just as well to any other obstacles in life. And for that, you become a better person as a trader uh, and in, 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 with this tool in a faster way. Next slide, please. This is the three aspects that uh, were talked about last week. Um, and I disagree. I, I enjoy the enthusiasm, uh, similar like uh, Matthew does. But I don't think that you can condition just a response and will have uh, the solutions to those three massive aspects of trading. Um, so conditioning is very good for state control and as such for, uh, for trading execution, meaning it's always good to get your, your superhero hat on and be that different person that you need to be. Uh, for doing logistics of actual execution, so everything after the start button is hit for an entry to a trade when it comes 
becomes reactionary versus anticipatory and when your brain should not be in the way any longer, but you're just following the rules. That's where conditioned response is highly advisable and very effective. But unfortunately, conditioned response is how they were, were met. And for those who weren't here last time, Matthew basically introduced a methodology where you condition yourself in different aspects of life with coaches or uh, and I, I have used uh, methods of bandless and I've been to Tony Robbins seminars and I've, I've worked with really good conditioners, but I can tell you at the end of the day, it's not working. And uh, here's the reason why. Next slide, please. Discipline is a belief to start with the first one. And uh, a belief is a very deeply rooted aspect. Now, if you want to condition this at some point, let's say you're in a trade, uh, to the right here, I just used that iceberg of what's uh, how much more massive the energy is that you that you're working against the condition discipline belief. Um, if you would have a trade where you buy at 20, you have your stop at 19, and would want to finance under the quad rules with a one to two risk conversion minimum at 22 with half of your position, um, you get closer to 19 and hope kicks in. And that hope that's kicking in of that times get better, uh, where you basically tempted to run a stop. Um, that's like millions of years of survival because we as a species have hope to be a very positive effect to get uh, in a positive mind when in adversity because in a positive mind, whatever, you run away from the, the saber-toothed tiger or you hide in the cave for a long time uh, starving or whatever is required, but you're in a positive thinking mind frame. You're not like... Uh, totally broken down and in brackets get out at 19. Um, and everybody in there, I'm sure, is in the room of running stops and you, you promise yourself over and over, because I will never do that again and I will be more disciplined the next time I'm getting out. And you still run the stop each time. So just a little warm-up conditioning in the morning will not cut that. Now, what's, since we're talking about what works, what's the solution, what works? You have to trade smaller. You have to trade smaller. I, I cannot iterate this uh, enough. If you find the discipline, and often it means that you have to switch the, the object that you're trading because one share is sim simple, simply too much uh, on futures contract because you still get triggered on that hopefulness and adversity because the, the trade is meaningful to you. You can, you can. I have not found another way to get out of this one. You have to trade crypto, for example, where you can trade extremely small lots, where you don't care at all if you lose it, and uh, where you condition a response from an experience perspective, meaning you have 10, 20,000 trades where you, where you realize, oh, okay, with a good hit rate and with a good uh, risk reward ratio, I, uh, I am consistently, and you, you're building that energy pole up that is bigger than the one, uh, that you're facing. Whatever your personal fears are, some people have more fear of missing out, other people have, uh, fear of pushing the, to the trigger, other fear, well, whatever it is, it's very individualized. That's the way to go. That's at least in my experience, uh, maybe even the only way. And, if not a very harmonious way and a way that will eventually work, at least it did for me and many of the people that I coach. By the way, this is not a marketing call. I don't coach much anymore. I don't have the time. I'm a full-time trader. Um, so there will be no pitch, nothing to sell or, or buy. Um, I, I need to do this uh, purely from a perspective of contribution here. Uh, and that's uh, all to the thanks of Matthew who's uh, sharing his resources. Uh, next slide, please. From discipline uh, leading to confidence, that's what it does. Repetition works, conditioning does not. What's the difference? The difference is conditioning comes from outside, meaning you're listening to this guy, this guy says, well, if you have the right trader mindset, if you're doing the right thing, then this all works out. Um, 
in fact, there is a repetition that comes from inside and a, a real experience field where, where you have 20,000 times uh, from, from 20,000 executed trades uh, a positive reaction. That's something, again, that's a principle you know, that you can lead again. It's an ultimate truth. And here, just a, as the backdrop of knowledge is the key, there is no secret. It's very important that uh, these experiences that we have, they are effective experiences. So you cannot read this in the book. You cannot tell somebody how it is that you feel like being a runner from uh, from writing about running. You need to run yourself. And they have put the best minds in think tanks. They have chess masters together, whatever they all try with really brilliant minds. These guys did not come ever up with uh, a great training methodology because this is not an intellectualized sport and this is not uh, a right brain solution to, uh, obstacle to overcome. This, this is a very practical thing. And maybe going back to discipline, Discipline at the end, because I said it's a belief. People often ask, let's say, for example, me, well, how can we never sleep? How can we never go to, to, to on vacation? Uh, how come, how come, how come? You, must have, you have so much discipline. And for me, obviously, that's not discipline at all. I'm just a trader. So I do what I do. And if you, if I would envy somebody who, who goes every day at five o'clock running for 20 uh, miles, it's the same thing for that person. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm a runner. I just get up. I, I need to do that. I feel compelled to do so. And uh, it's the most natural way. To, so discipline is not an effort. Uh, discipline is not something that you can say, well, next time I get out at 19, you will get out at 19 when you truly believe that it's good for you to get out at 19 and carry that belief at the time when 19 is touched. And the problem what's overlooked is you can lip sync yourself all the way you want to before the trade that you're getting out. But when you're at 19 and you tapping into the subconscious hopefulness belief, then you will simply not get out because you think, oh, well, at least break even. Uh, it has to bounce here, here is support, and uh, by the end of the day, the day, you will get out at 16, and that's exactly when the market turns, um, and then frustration is even higher. Can we have the next slide, please? So all these monitors were basically also representing that uh, this isn't about that you have the best computers or the most monitors or whatever. This, it's all about experience. Training is experience. You have to be for many years behind the screens. You have to have a certain amount of numbers of trades executed in the right mindset and mind frame. Um, that's where that's where the rubber meets the road. Finally, and maybe even most importantly, or at least on the same level, uh, Matthew was talking about probabilities last time, and this is a very very tricky one because. Uh, it seems so, in brackets, easy. Um, like uh, you have you have that trade, trade sample size, for example, and you have uh, one dollar losers and two dollar winners, and you have uh, fourteen. Uh, you have thirteen losers, so you lose thirteen times a dollar, and you have seven times a uh, two dollar winner. Uh, that makes minus thirteen dollars on the losers and plus fourteen dollars on the winners, and you're still a winner even so you have a very lousy hit rate. So just I'll give one example of the probabilities, and they seem logical, they make sense, but we have nothing to work that with. Meaning, just like time, we we don't have any kind of feeling for probabilities, any kind of measurement as a human. To work this, so it's purely intellectualized. Mm -hmm. And since we cannot think or feel in probabilities, again, promising yourself that each trade, which truly is the case, factually is is meaningless because the outcomes are random. 
just because you understand that doesn't mean that it changes that you each time with every trade and even now after 60,000 trades are executed you still want that trade to go up I'm not sitting there and thinking to myself oh it's just sample size I don't care about that trade no I still want it to go up and I still think about break even and I still I just have disciplined myself to the fact that I have the experience that I still trade that small that I'm very comfortable with uh, my losses um, that I can sustain uh, sitting through a trade and uh, truly it really works because I use uh, the codex which takes care of these emotions because it's it makes you a winner at the beginning by quickly after entry you're taking half off uh, so that 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 urgency to take partial profits or for other people full profits is satisfied and uh, on the other hand the mathematical aspects are taken care of as well um, this first line here human compare even through every moment is unique that's that's one example uh, similar to probabilities where we don't have a measurement uh, based on the Big Bang theory, which I think is in principle. Um, every moment is unique. We're completely expanding all the time, which means uh, all that stuff about technical analysis where we oh this is at 19 again, uh, just like last time. E it's falsified and why we have this unrealistic view of the world uh, where we compare and say oh i was at this party before or oh this guy looks familiar uh, or the situation looks familiar even though the situation is completely brand new because every second popping by the mix-up of all energies in the whole world is all the time new is that our brain couldn't simply fathom that amount of data. So what we're doing is we're comparing. We're not saying, oh, I have to evaluate a whole new set of data all the time. You just say, oh, OK, it's five seconds later. But that just feels like five seconds ago, even though it might be completely different. You, you might have had a car accident in your life. will never be the same. Um, so we have a lot of these flaws. And therefore, it's very sensible to examine life and especially in this case training uh, behavior training material with a grain of salt and look for our true principles and not something that somebody wrote down the next slide please so to close this up with what is it that really works and i'm not saying that conditioning is bad uh, matthew has definitely said uh, it's, first of all, for execution, it's absolutely essential. And even for the other aspects uh, mentioned of um, discipline, probabilities, and whatever the third thing was. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm also watching here for the open positions in, in the precious metal markets. Uh, and uh, it's a very important thing here before the close. So I'm, sl I'm slightly sometimes distracted. Whatever works, what truly works is um, you have to check your ego at the door. The willingness to change is the most important thing. And in addition to this, con to, to conditioning for these three specific aspects, um, it is important to uh, use other, me other methodologies just as well. So after you have a system established by collecting principal edges, and principal edges also for your psychology and for execution and for money management and for whatever the aspect you have to work on, um, you need other tools. Uh, so you have the conditioned states. That's important for a carefree mind for execution. You cannot expect if you kick the dog and, and hit the wife in the morning that you're coming home, uh, loaded with profits from the market because the market reflects this is nothing else than another, all other creative fields you get back of how you walk towards this. So the market will always find your weak spot and you get better throughout time because hopefully you're on a path of betterment as a whole, as a being. Um, and 
again, center point executes small lots. And for some people, some people get sweaty with paper trading. So you have to find out what for you a small lot is. Small lot is not the smallest unit that unit that, that market provides. Uh, small lot is not that you have pressure because you wiped out three accounts and uh, you need to make a living. Small lot is literally you do not care. You don't care. You just don't care. And when you don't care, you don't violate uh, your rules and, and your set up principle behavior because you're not tapping into these deeper, really hardcore states of uh, stuff that's not good for trading because 95% in trading is counterintuitive. So that's that's why people don't walk away at random. That's why people who participate in the markets and have no clue still are complete losers and have extreme bad uh, loss ratios because they do intuitive behavior and throw in intuitive behavior in a counterintuitive field. Uh, the next thing is these small lots and, and successfully executing them, uh, repeating it or until it's proficient allows you to step up further. And that doesn't just mean financially, that means also psychologically you, you, you become a better trader by following your rules. You have to pat yourself on the back, not only if you walk away on a day with a few thousand dollars trading with its winnings, but if you, if you just did what was expected of you to do uh, from a year rule perspective. Um, use the quad. It is an exceptionally great tool um, for many, many reasons. Position building, risk uh, reduction, uh, stacking odds. That's a very good tool that I can recommend. And what I do and what has served me very well, each time I find that I do a repetitive behavior is something wrong or, or I shouldn't say wrong. If if trading doesn't go right most of the time, it's just because there's a rule missing. So examine what just happened. Uh, why did I feel awkward or why can I not overcome a certain obstacle that seems to be appearing every day? Just scrutinize uh, where, where maybe there is something because the devil is always in the detail, and that's especially true for trading. Um, just find a remedy of if I would have done that uh, versus if I would have done what I did and establish a new rule and uh, hip pocket it to your overall trading behavior. Um, sorry that I took so much time and wanted to just uh, brief and did babble as quickly as I could through this. I don't uh, want to interfere with. Uh, Nam's presentation and uh, Matthew's and your guys' time, but I, I thought hopefully this brings a little bit uh, value in addition to Matthew's great presentation of last week. And uh, thank you for your, for your ears and for your very valuable time. Awesome, Corby. Thank you so much for coming on. So, um, Corby, is this presentation? Do you mind if I, because folks are probably going to ask me for it, if I share it in the private channel there? No, that's fine. It's, this is all. This, I just made this for you guys. Uh, so this is all, all to be had and enjoyed. You can also PM me if you want me to 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 if you have questions or whatever. In this time. Awesome. All right. Well, we got some folks in the channel that said thanks, Kirby. I appreciate you presenting. Yeah, I do too. So guys, just just take it from this. <laughs> you can't beat principles. You can. You might be able to cheat them for a little while, but they'll catch up to you. So you might as well just condition them the best you can. And, and then through repetition, it becomes a skill. So, all right, Corby, I know you got like 40 or 50 charts open. I'm stressing out over two. So <laughs> there are, you know, different levels to the game, guys. That's okay. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Corby. And is, is Nam even, is Nam on? I don't, she, uh, I haven't uh, messaged yet. We haven't gone back and forth in over four hours. So I had this intuition that she might not show. Um, there's a fellow Jister that I don't know who that is uh, because I don't know who that name is. If that's Nam, she can unmute herself. If not, um, I'll just go Well, in that, ca in, in that case, if there should be questions, I gladly uh, yeah. answer some questions. Because I'm aware I rushed a little bit through this material. 
Well, when you so re- repeat until proficient, is that is that just so it's you get your you get your habits down and then you just repeat it every day and then basically your habits daily will create something great. And it is is it is di- directly related to the prior uh, mentioned, which means execute small lots. You have to stay small because even those people who follow that rule, they grow too quickly as soon as you. Grow, Let's say you, you trade one contract and you're proficient to that point that you feel comfortable that, that you don't violate your, your execution rules. It can still be that two contracts are way too much, meaning you might have another half a year to trade on one contract till you actually have that energy pile up to the point that you're ready for trading two contracts. So in the hundreds of people that I help with trading, I don't know how often I set it. They ask, so what should I do? And I said, well, just trade smaller. Just trade smaller. Because it is fear or greed or any kind of these emotions that trigger us into uh, responsive behavior that's not conducive to trading. And as long as you be that disciplined to say, yeah, well, so it may take us a year longer. Because, folks, the only thing that matters is consistency. Uh-huh. Once you're consistent, you can either hit up a frequency or you can hit up size. But there is no rush. You cannot rush this thing. It's impossible. You cannot. If you're running out of money, well, then, then that's, sorry. That, that's, that's one thing that, of course, everybody breaks. You talk to a professional trader, they say, I'm running 100 grand. Yeah, we have only 20. Yeah, you will. This will bite you because you need a hundred. I mean, I would say you need a hundred, especially with crypto. You don't need a hundred, but you cannot bend as Matthew just said the principles um, and repeat until proficient is is meant that trade small, <laughs> just trade small. And when you when you when you have a problem, yeah, step back, trade smaller again. Uh, I trade small as a money management rule for the different qualifications that I give a market that I tell them, okay, what's next new excursion, what's, a, uh, what's volatility, what's time of day. And I know for me personally that certain market conditions stress me personally out more than others. I trade smaller. I just trade smaller by, by a rule set. Uh, and it works. It, it really, I know uh, from many, many years and many, many trades of experience, that rule works. And tr- you can trust me, there is, this is not a shortcoming that at the end you're walking away with very nice profits. So it's, it's just difficult to do at the beginning, but at least it's a lot less difficult than just to say to yourself, well, I will not run that stop. And after... A hundred losing trades in a row, you, you're like devastated about your self-confidence. Why do you do this all the time over and over again? Um, so there's a reason why the suicide rate is really high in trading. So we'd rather go that, that less attractive, less uh, sexy route of, of just trading smaller. Anybody Ross, have a question? Yeah, Ross asks, can you remind how the quad exit is set up? Quad exit is a very simple in its in its basic frame set. You're all it's an all in approach, meaning let's say you, you buy a hundred shares of something, you buy a hundred shares. So there's no averaging in. Well, by the way, I'm not a fan of uh, Money girl strategies, they're not, they're, they're psychologically very and, and statistically very unsustainable. Um, so it's an all in approach. Let's say you buy at, a, at $20 um, 100 shares. And then what the quad says is you take initial profits, you take 50%, which means in this case 50 shares, after an initial win off. So let's say the uh, price goes in your favor with an example of before where we have a setup of buying at 20, stop at 19, and financing target at 22. So as soon as the price reaches at 22, you take 50 shares off. Now you're left with 50 shares. 
Now, what's the advantage of that approach? You just been made a winner because uh, I'm sure you experienced when it goes to 21, you're already like, oh, I, I, give me, give me something. Uh, and at 22, it's really tough to say well, to wait till whatever 30. But if you're taking half off psychologically, you're like, all right, I made, I made, I made two bucks and half of this whole thing. Now, two things occur. You're left with half. That means also half of the risk. So you lost two, you, you won two dollars on 50 shares. That gives you a uh, hundred bucks profits. And now you have 50 shares left and, uh, you don't even have to push to break even yet. Because often putting the other stop to 20, what most people do, just makes it get stopped out. You can still leave the 19 stop in, which means if you would get stopped out, you have 50 at a loss of $2, $100 loss, and you made a $100 profit. So you have a break even trade and only pay commissions. That gives you choices. And choices is always really great in trading because it lets you breathe. It lets you trade what the market does and what some stiff mathematical rules. And let's say price comes back from 22, you're, you're still feeling great. It goes a little bit negative to, from the entry price to, let's say, 19 and a half. You don't threaten it. You're like, well, the worst that can happen is uh, it was, I wasted my time and I pay a little commissions. Then price goes up and now it can sit till 24, let's say, just as an example. And 24 would be your next target. So what the quad says, first half out and then comes a quarter out, so 25 shares. So at 24, you would take another profit of 25 shares. Now you have another profit of 25 shares, and that's another, uh, now for $4 profit, that's another $100. Now you have $200 in profit, and you have 25 shares left. And that's the ideal scenario, because you made your money. You made 200 bucks, and your initial risk at the beginning was a hundred bucks because you had a hundred shares with one dollar stop to 19 from 2019 and that was your initial risk so you already have a winning trade of a risk reward ratio of one to two if you now put your stop from 19 for the last 25 shares to 20. so that's it you don't need more what does that do you have 25 shares that are pure bonus world you you're carefree you don't you don't you don't you don't mind you make your 200 bucks, money is made. And this is the really great thing because you can do with these 200 shares, uh, with these 25 shares, whatever you want to. Meaning, you can say, I have another target at 30. You can say, I trail a stop and be advised, go to break even, but not further. Because it's logical that the further this thing runs, let's say it runs to 26, 27, the bigger, more likely is uh, the retracement. So most people put the stop always at the wrong place, somewhere in the middle, because they don't want to give up on it. So if you don't have a quad and it runs to 27, and you were even able to hold a whole 100 shares to 27, you put your stop now at 23.50 or something like this. And here you get nicked out and you're still disappointed because you left half of the profits on the table. With a, a runner of 25, leaving the stop only at break even and giving this thing really room to wiggle and get in a in a strong trend develop you can hold this let's say you're trading bitcoin i have uh, i have still runners in where i bought bitcoin at 3000 and i will partially i mean sometimes i take something off but i will still have runners in when we trade at half a million and these things had a risk of of a of a few ticks entry, so that's that's the real that's the real money. So that's one of one of the benefits of quads psychology. One of the benefits of uh, of quads is that you have runners, or let's say you want a stake, or just in the long term portfolio, you can you can be a swing trader and simply take those last twenty five coins off, put them on a ledger, and say that's that's additional profits, but I don't have to. I don't have to make dollar profits out of this uh, or Bitcoin profits out of this. You can you can just take money off. So you can also um, position, uh, establishment position, build. Uh, now think a little bigger instead of quad, make it make it a six or eight tuplet. So you can also uh, do true pyramiding, size pyramiding without any risk because pyramiding is really bad if you do this with the, the common style. So there is a lot of 
possibilities of the quad that uh, that are all beneficial to a, especially a psychological mindset of a trader and psychology is 99 percent of trading so in short um, a quad is uh, all in half off relatively shortly so if you are contrarian you basically have a bounce scenario and when that energy subsides you just take partial profits uh, so you don't need big luster risk reward ratios so or a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1.2 is plenty for uh, for the financing point so half off pretty quickly another target scenario of uh, another quarter of the position size and letting the last quarter position size running so don't be greedy with that last part that is supposed to be a bonus round so if you have the scenario of financing at 22 next target at 24 you don't get out with at 25 I mean, you can have rules of strong counter signal on a larger time frame for an exit uh, or you can have whatever all-time highs let's say if you buy bitcoin here and you have many positions and you take half of these position runners off at all time highs. yeah that's fine but it's also good to just let this be free money uh, just Play money, way so yeah, I don't care. It's, it's okay. It's uh, if you go somewhere, oh, wow, great. Um, I mean, you have to have profit-taking rules. I'm not just like a hodler with the rest, but give it, give it room, and you will find that there is in incredible potential left. Did that answer the question? Yeah, I, th I think so, right, Ross? And I, I guess this is probably a more uh, advanced answer. Probably won't even have time for it. I guess the question I had is like, there must be certain conditions and criteria that you'd have to like designate. Okay, well, this runner, this is going to be for a longer term. This one is more for a day trade. I guess the market would dictate that. I guess that would be uh, of interest is to say, okay, how do I designate this runner? What's the purpose of it? Well, that will be depending on your system. So yeah. I personally, uh, at some point after the first 20 years of trading, realized to myself that the true edges come from the point if you um, if you develop true edges, meaning something others don't use. So I don't have a classical technical analysis trading anymore. I trade uh, prismatically through turning points and then distribute trade entry points for low risk through time frames. So imagine you have a stop, a very, very small stop, maybe a quarter percent, uh, even on a volatile object like Bitcoin, it's maybe uh, certainly never more than half a percent, but you also have this for all time frames. So I have a quarter to a half a percent of risk on a monthly time frame as well. Now, if you have a system like this, and you basically have six positions of a 15, uh, 60 daily, weekly, and monthly position. You treat the different runners for those for those different time frames. So the runner on the monthly would literally be like, yeah, well, I have a projected Fibonacci tool target of uh, okay, my next expansion is at one twenty seven, one hundred twenty seven thousand dollars somewhere in that region with bitcoin that would be a runner target for uh for the monthly time frame if obviously it's a 50 minute or a 60 minute target uh, uh entry time frame the runner would be somewhere half the way to uh to the all-time highs whatever interesting points from a time perspective, I work a lot with time versus price, so it's a little bit difficult for me to, to talk in price because I, I use intermarket relationships uh, in regards to time components. So I, I basically trade time cycles, and this whole thing is in real time, so I have no, I'm not projecting, I'm just following the market versus uh, projecting targets because it makes no sense to me why the market would stop at a certain price level that's that's based on classical technical TA that is not so not so much part of my trading anymore. Um, then they're there. So it's more like 
runners take care of themselves. You will, it's like having a dog. And you have one of these these uh, leashes that where the dog can run pretty far, but at some point that leash is just uh, stopping the dog. If I get a constant pull or if I get a certain tension on on that leash from from, from let's say price, as I said in my case, it's more like time. There's no reason for me to 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 get out of that trade. Um, if I have, if I'm in a sideways market where I don't have a directional favor, then obviously overshoots of of the higher barrier is a good target. If the probabilities, I, I basically ask myself always, how much do I have to risk for? How much do I have to get at any part on time of trading? So if I see that I would have to leave ten parts for risk for that runner. For, for two parts of gain, yeah, why, why not cash it in? I, I also don't have to be greedy and say everything has to go to the moon. No, you can, and, and that's the great thing. It's, it's, it's uh, excuse my language, but I call it fuck your money. Uh, if the runner is fuck your money and I, it doesn't matter because my money is made, I can also treat it like this. Meaning on a scarcity day where I feel like, oh, I don't know, yeah. Okay, so I go out and make myself feel good because cash register ring is always nice for everybody. If I uh, if 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 I had a really great week, yeah, why not leave something on the table? So what if it, if if I lose some for the next week? That, that's it's okay. So that's the great thing is that flexibility because it allows to compensate for human error, and this is. This is what nobody does. This is the biggest problem in trading. Everybody is so baked after five or seven years to just have a trading system that has an edge. And the edge is, let's say, something like 54, 55, 56, 57%. You will, you will still fail because you do not calculated human error that gets this back right to 50-50. And with 50-50 being frustrated because you're expecting 57-43, you again become a loser again because the confidence goes out and confidence is a huge aspect in trading. Um, I basically, all the work that I do online in, the, in, in those three, two channels that I'm working is nothing else than trying to ooze confidence by placing my trades in real time so everybody can see it is possible um, uh, because I think that's the most important thing in the beginning, in the first five to ten years that traders need to see is that you can't do this. It's just very difficult, but it is possible. And what the quad does is exactly that. It's a confidence building exit strategy because you get basically constantly rewarded. And uh, that's how that's how we just work as human beings. We're pleasure seeking and risk avoiding. Uh, <laughs> risk avoiding. Here we go. That's a trader's mishap. Uh, Paid avoiding. Uh, and that's exactly what I do. I avoid risk <laughs> to avoid pain and I seek pleasure. And that's why I use the quad. Yeah, I mean, excellent. I mean, it's it's useful on all time frames and uh, you could just see it work time and time again and, and satisfying multiple needs, financial, human needs, feeling like a winner. Ross says, uh, thank you so much. That was great. Um, yeah. Any other questions? And that can be not topic related. Any any problems with your trading? Any personal? There's no secrets here. You can like, anybody feel free? So because we ha it seems like we have the time now because the second speaker didn't show. Um, I gladly answer any question uh, that I've asked. Well, I have one. If that's, I started to jump in. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> uh, I usually jump in first, right? Uh, so I had, I had a funeral this for last Friday. I mean, do I do, did I do the right thing taking that off? Because I felt like, man, I missed some big moves in Bitcoin. I came back and I was like, don't come back and just want to trade. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what i did so was, was that was that the right move or is, is discipline mean you're just showing up every day no matter what even when you don't feel like it 
discipline is to do what you set out to do. Definitely a rule in trading is you don't want to ever trade in any kind of emotional states. That wedding, funeral, uh, moving, uh, fights with a spouse, whatever, all this stuff, no trading. That's no trading. So you follow the main rules. And I would say I start feeling very uncomfortable. That's just a personal trade. It doesn't have to be your case, but the world is a problem for me personally. It's just my personal experience. I I uh, I come from a background of uh, have a master's in audio engineering. Uh, I I was a chef for a long time. Uh, I have some classical training there. And I was a professional uh, studio drummer, and um, and I painted. So I come from an artist perspective background, and every of these things were social. So I was a failure in that aspect, meaning I tried really hard to sit the people around the table and get a group to grab our band together and pay for people for exhibitions. And, and all of these things worked only to a certain level because my enthusiasm was, I just expected too much from, from the people around me. I was just, in, I was restless and I needed something else. And I, I find comfort in the markets. So as much as I advise don't trade, meaning don't execute, I find true uh, liberty in my dis discipline. Meaning if I'm distraught, if I have pro personal problems, I know if I go towards the markets, I find stability. I find uh, nourishment, creativity from a creative, creative perspective. And I find uh, I find comfort in the markets because the market, as much as it's very hard to predict, is, is it's very steady. It's always there. It always opens. It's the last business that closes and the first business that opens again. It provides for, for my living and my family. Uh, it um, it's never boring and it always is uncomfortable to the way that I like it. Not everybody likes this proctology of all the time looking at yourself and all the time needing to be self-reflective. But it's something that you can count on. If you if you were at a wedding or a funeral and uh, there's all these emotions and all these, uh, it's confu it can get confusing and can distract from yourself. So not executing I find great, but maybe it's also good to still be present in the market just to, to feel the pulse, to be, many of the traders that I met, they don't really go on vacations and they still look at their screens and they, they, they it's addictive. But I don't think that the addiction comes from, from a gambling aspect. I think the addiction comes from what I just said. It is very reliable. And uh, humans, or at least in my, in my situation, many humans like... Um, Consistency. Market, the market is very consistent. Uh, so on one hand, I would say don't execute, but maybe still, still, still have your consistent friend on your side for a few hours on on these days. Yes. Um. Thank you for that. Uh, Tristan says, I guess executing small lots sort of reminds me of the eighty twenty rule or the Pareto principle. Are they connected? I'm not sure. What's the 80-20 rule again? I mean, I, you have to... 80-20 uh, rule states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. Um, I... I know that twist is the other way around. I... I, um, I have a rule in trading... That's the 80-20 rule. And the 80-20 rule in trading basically states that 80% is rule-based and 20% is discretionary. Mm -hmm. um, and what it really means is uh, it is very hard to try to force something so alive like a market in, in, 
in, in, a, in a box in, in something where you say, I know all of this, or uh, we'll, we'll program a coder of all of this, or it's just to, you might have a, you might have a dog, by the way, I don't have a dog, but I use a dog method for today, I don't know why. If you have a dog, this dog might be super reliant. You have to taunt them all the tricks and you don't need a leash because, but there is this thing happening of the squirrel running by and the dog's instinct is just to take off after the squirrel. And even <laughs> so the dog is the most reliable thing, it, it will take off. This is that 20% meaning, um, leaving that room and by with discretionary, I mean more like, uh, leaving that room it's very good to have a lot of rules it's very good to to uh, uh anything that you can predict especially before an, an entry when you when you're not bound to the fact that as soon as you press the button now you have to do something which is you have to exit at some point you have to have rules when to exit what and, and you're bound to money exposed to the markets anything that you can do prior to that point so it should be scrutinized, but but you need to leave that room. I know that this is not a direct response to your question, but either way, maybe you see that connection, which is everything needs a degree of freedom, a degree of choices. If you go to the ice cream store and they have chocolate and vanilla, that's not a choice because maybe you're the strawberry guy. So. The minimum is always three. Two is never a choice. And obviously, seven or 19 is better than three. So the degree of variant is something that allows us to... to All right. Hello, hello. Everybody there? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, was, I guess someone was unmuted. Um, just you know, following up on the rules, Corby. We, we you know we worked for years together to get these rules and behaviors in place. And you know, a lot of a lot of it was you know accountability. Lots of sheets filling it out. You know, did you do the call? Did you do this? How did you do? Did it affect you? Did you quit? This and that. And also, you know, conditioning reward systems for just showing up as well. Remember, it's like not just you know, pressing the button, it's like, you know, we can come to the computer screen. So the, the question I have is, are the rules and things, you know, that we discuss here, are you, are you at such a level now that it's implicit knowledge where it's just in a flow state? Or are you also filling out sheets and things to condition things even to this day? Uh, the answer is twofold, which means you obviously, if you have thousands of rules at some point, and I never counted them, but I have, I have a lot of rules. Um, uh, some become second nature. So once the, the rules are super internalized, you obviously don't need to, I don't even reflect those any longer. Um, but everything new that comes in or everything that's whatever, just a few years old, absolutely. Uh, I condition and fill out and there are certain things that I, uh, I for example, have, have a daily call just, just like you do, meaning I need my daily call because it's my my orientation sheet for the next day. It's my my order of what to do and or most more importantly what not to do, uh, what 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 not to focus on, and uh, so the that's the yes answer. The the other part is maybe a little bit more. It's, it's a different question from a flow perspective. I did over the last two years. And I dabbled with this before. Um, try to intuitively trade, which is very tricky and not for everybody, and um, possibly also not for myself. But I had, I had, I should say this, I had experiences uh, that get more and more um, denser, where I'm just like, well, I'm absolutely certain. I mean, they have a 88% hit rate, so that's that's already a good degree of certainty just from a rule-based perspective. But I I do now, I'm in contact with that energy of, how should I say, 
I care that little trading that small <laughs> to, to line this up with today's presentation uh, that I have that at some point when everything comes together it's just absolutely clear that that basket will go in I have no doubt there is just finally no doubt because I'm a very uh, I'm a person who is easily worried and I'm a, not a brave person and I'm so it also has to do with mental makeup, but I basically have grown through the market to a confidence level that's very healthy for me uh, as a development, as a person. And that's that's how I see the market. I don't see the market only as an abundant field to nicely work from home and provide for your family, but I think it's an incredibly great opportunity to become a better person because you just have to look at every in every skeleton in the closet, otherwise you're not making it through this field, through this minefield. And uh, I, uh, I'm very grateful to the to the markets, and I do have these these flow trading states now more intensely. But I would advise, in general, including myself, uh, to fill out the forms and uh, be very pragmatic about trading. Trading should be boring. Is what I always often say is when trading is boring then it's then, then it's right then you then you're the right if you if you enter a position you're already starting sweating and when you push that button then you either trade too big or you can count on that this is the loser if trading is if, if trading is absolutely boring then you are a very good then you did your homework Uh, Tristan says that helped. Thanks, Corby. I'm really glad. I don't want to waste your guys' time. That's for sure. That's why I said um, be very specific with your questions because you hear me babble. I'm, I'm just enthusiastic. I don't want to take your time. I, I get it. I, I, I'm way slower. I normally talk like a tenth as fast as as I do here. Um, I just, I'm a trader. I'm, I'm passionate about this subject and I, uh, it has brought great liberations to, uh, to my life. And, uh, if I can provide shortcuts, because the only thing that's really, that I underestimated greatly and that, uh, that's, that's a hardship for many is that it takes way longer than uh, it's assuming because obviously the skill set is only to, to press a button, but to, when to press that button is a very difficult task. Um, yeah. And if 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 any of you, uh, I'll, I'll I'll be in that channel now uh, of Matthews. If I ever hit a, a snag where you need some advice, uh, that you think that maybe I can contribute something, you can just PM me and I gladly try to help out. 